What's good? It's your boy, Trillis T, aka Tyler, coming at you again with episode three, Backpacking Mexico. Today's video is my adventures in the deep dark colonial Guadalajara. So Guadalajara ended up being my favorite city. Once I got there, I didn't like it. I was like, what is this? It's different. It's slower. People are nicer. This is not Mexico. This isn't Mexico City. Help me. <laughs> yeah, that's how I thought. The difference in Guadalajara to Mexico City is blunt as day. In Guadalajara, the people are friendlier. They speak slower. And they actually let you cross the street. In Mexico City, if you want to cross the street, you got to dodge cars or you're going to get hit. So Guadalajara was a good change. Slowing it down, my first day there, I was in shock. I stayed inside and actually I washed my clothes. I thought that was the best decision for that day. Being a backpacker, you gotta wash your clothes sometimes. And I just went to the sink and started washing and it turned out well. They started smelling good. You know, I had some uh, powder laundry detergent that I brought with me and thank God I did. If you're a backpacker, bring powdered detergent. Then after a few days, I started getting riskier. I went to the zoo. Now this zoo is famous in Guadalajara. If you go there, you gotta go to the zoo. We are at Guadalajara's zoo and it's supposed to be one of the biggest zoos in Latin America. And today my goal is to see Harambe, hopefully fall in the cage and then go see a buffalo. And they've got, they got chairlifts. You see that shit? They have an enclosure full of monkeys. Those monkeys are nuts. I've never seen such little monkeys and they're running around, jumping on the workers, jumping on people. The workers for Pete's sake, they have a squirt bottle on their hip for when the monkeys act up and they want to like escape, they just squirt them and the monkeys like screech, they hate it. I, I, I saw chimpanzees, I saw horses, I saw donkeys. Literally the whole barnyard was in this zoo and I 100% recommend it. Take an Uber, boom. Moving from there, I went to downtown, I walked around, I saw how colonial this city truly was. It was very colonial but it still had a modern take on it which I, I loved. Very different. I struggled right away with finding friends because moving to any new city, backpacking to any new city, you don't know anyone and it takes a few days to get these connections going. So luckily I had my blog to turn to, but eventually I found some people and this girl, she invited me to go to a concert with her that somehow I began uh, moshing in. I somehow got into a mosh pit and was loving it. The guys were wearing Lucha Libre masks. After the Lucha Libre concert, there was like a Chilean band that was playing. Very traditional, very cool. I enjoyed the differentness of it. So that was about the first, I'd say five or six days in Guadalajara Central. From there, after the culture shock wore off and I started seeing the city for more what it was, I decided let's get a new hostel because Getting new hostels is the best thing you can do when backpacking. Honestly, mark this one down, please. Because going to a new hostel has different people. So you might be getting into a rut with the one you're at and you might be feeling, ah, this is normal, this is normal. Go to another hostel and it's a completely different vibe. It might be a party hostel, might be different minded people. It's great. Central, and uh, I 
was taking a bus, and buses around here are 7 pesos, which is like 40 cents, 30 cents, and uh, I took it for as long as I could, and then he had to turn around, and now I'm on foot, looking for another bus, because I got like 5 more blocks, you know, normally I'd be like super hyped on walking 5 blocks, but uh, with this huge mochila, mochila grande, to be honest, in Guadalajara, I was very lonely at first, and I really didn't have a lot of people, so I would talk to my camera, and even throughout Mexico, I'd talk to my camera, or I'd write, write, a, I'd write a blog. It's either filming or blog. So I, at times, I was walking on the street with my camera, and people were totally thinking I was a nut. Like, what's this nut doing? What's this nut doing? But no, it was working. During this journey on foot, I started talking about life and people's daily routines and why I was trying to run away from that with this trip and why I was trying to learn more about this world from this trip. I really like to jump from hostel to hostel. And part of me really doesn't, but the other part of me does, and I'll get into that. So the part of me that does like it is the adventurous part. Every hostel is different, it's in a different part of the town, city, whatever the case is. Different people you'll meet there, it's just really, really different, and it's good to spice it up. But the other part that doesn't like it is the part that, the part of me that gets so complacent. I, I find comfort in routine, as we do most people, and on traveling that's the worst thing to get into, is to a routine. Today I'm gonna go do this, and tomorrow my plan says I'm gonna go get pizza at 9, and then I'm gonna go get beers at 10, and it's just gonna be perfect. It's like, no, fuck that. That's not traveling. That, that's a uh, routine. I'm not much of a routine guy. And I almost just got hit. <laughs> Taxis in Mexico, baby. So where am I at? Where am I at? Yeah, this entire trip is just about uh, me. Getting out of my routine and just living life. Living every day and experiencing what I'm missing. And just, that's all I can say. Like, this is fucking life, baby. Like, if you're watching this, you're living too. You can do this. And shit, if you, if this isn't for you, it's not for everyone. Like, there's people who say, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, you're just too much. Or, uh, I just really wish, I wish. And it's like, dude, you don't have to wish. It's just not for everyone. And, and, and it's just something to accept. But I think everyone, with that being said, should at least give themselves a vacation. Now, this, this is more extreme vacation. This guy's pointing at me. I don't know why he's pointing at me. I wasn't about to get hit. Thank God. But this is my hostel. Because this shit's not for you, it's not for you. And that, that's fine. It's hard. It's really fucking hard. It's hard not understanding the language. It's hard not having a family. It's not hard. The entire shit's hard, but there's really positives to it. There's a lot of positives. And it's just a mental game. Like, if you tell yourself you can do it, by God. By God, by universe, whatever you may call it, like, you can fucking do it. And I am a living proof living fucking breathing case. I wanted this hard enough. People told me no. They said, Tyler, you're stupid. Why would you go to Mexico? And I told them. I, I looked into it. I did my research. And I told them, Scott, like, I, I'm going to do it because I know. Like, I, I've done the research. Well, they're, they're just brainwashed by mainstream media. And of course, there are some bad shit in Mexico too, but these people who are telling me no are only looking at the bad. Only bad, bad, bad. It's like, dude, there's positives. There's positives in any situation. And they're just too close-minded to realize that. But I did, and that's why I'm here. So if you guys want it, you can go do it too. This shit's possible. I got to the hostel. This hostel's name was Hostel Nacional. And I 100% recommend it. If you go to Guadalajara, check it out. It's very modern, very cool. If It's, it's a party hostel. If you like drinking, hey, there you go. You got a lot of homies. I am not that kind of person, but I luckily met a lot of good friends there.
my friends and I, we had nothing going on. So I was like, hey baby, let's go to Lucha Libre. Let's go. And if you want to know something about Lucha Libre, is it's very, very fake. Like, it puts WWE to shame. Like, bro, WWE looks Hollywood professional compared to this Lucha Libre. If you visit Lucha Libre anywhere in Mexico, make sure you have friends because you can get lost and there's bad people in certain parts. I went with a huge group, we sat down, and my mind was rocked. Not only was Lucha Libre fake as shit, it was also full of people yelling swear words at each other, and it was completely accepted. You could call the guy out on stage and call him the worst names you could think of, and people would laugh and they'd clap. <laughs> Everyone was doing it. There was people standing, there was people shouting. I loved it. I loved it. That was that night, Lucha Libre night. A few days later, somehow I found myself going to the countryside, which doesn't make any sense. Going from city Lucha Libre to somehow ending up at countryside, baby, it's traveling. That's all I can say. Met this girl on couch surfing and we went for a hike. I hiked to the top of this mountain with her. Well, I hiked to the top of this hill with her and uh, yeah, just, freaking filmed it. It was cool. My last adventure in Guadalajara was to Tequila Jalisco. <sighs> Tequila Jalisco. What do I say? What do I say? So Tequila Jalisco, if you're in Guadalajara, is a must-do. You can get off, you can find a bus, you can get on it, and you can go. It's the home of Tequila. I didn't expect this tour to be as crazy as it was, but then again, I never expected for tequila to be that crazy either. After having tequila after tequila in little sample cups, mind you, man, was I day drunk. Honestly, never have been day drunk. Um, at 4 p.m. I had a hangover, which was completely unusual. I could say that I was a little bit over it once I had to do the bus ride home back with the drunks. <laughs> the bus ride home back with the drunks. Yeah, they were pretty wild. All in all, I totally recommend this tour if you go to Jalisco because it's culture. Tequila is so big over there uh, in Mexico that skipping this is like skipping some of the culture. My next move after all this madness in Guadalajara was to get on a bus and go to Sayulita. And Sayulita is where I hoped to get a surfboard and ride it for the first time. Because honestly, this was on my bucket list. You guys can't miss this next one. Check out episode four. Coming soon to a theater near you. I think it's good.